Hello, my name is Anna Trively, and welcome to the best podcast you've heard, because you probably haven't heard many, and this one's good. Uh, This is a podcast about a book that I read because I wanted to, so keep listening if you want to hear me ramble about this amazing book and tell you why I liked At Home in the World by Tish Oxenreiter. In this book, Tish tells a story about a year-long expedition she went on with her family of three kids and her husband, Kyle. Both parents are described as travel-loving beings with wanderlusts, and Tish elaborates on her internal conflict of longing to be a homebody and also wanting to travel the world and see all the tiny places. Tish writes, What a tiny place I occupy in the world. I want to see a thousand tiny places, smell their flowers, and taste the sauces made by their people. I want to feel the difference between the textures of grit in Sri Lanka and Morocco. I want to meet the woman who bakes the best bread in the smallest town in New Zealand. I want to find the best vantage point to see Bosnia from Croatia. What do the Grand Marnier crepes taste like in Rowan? In Paris, there are untold numbers of tiny places and extraordinary people who occupy them. That's beautiful. Um, Tish wrote this book to defy the common belief that traveling and having a family and being married are mutually exclusive. She makes traveling sound more fun than I had already thought it was, through her diction and how she phrases things. Speaking of my opinion on travel, it has been highly influenced by my experiences, and they're nowhere as near as cool as the ones described in this book, but they're still pretty cool. My parents told me right after I finished the first grade that we were moving to Sweden, and I was definitely scared at first because Roswell was the only place I knew existed and I would have to go to the second grade in a place I thought was a different planet. But the kids in this book, Tate, Reed, and Finn, didn't have to worry about this because they were homeschooled, which made it easier on the family, or harder, depending on how you look at it. But uh, My family and I lived in Sweden for the better part of two years. We traveled all the time. We could bike to school, be in a different country in a few hours. And my parents really took advantage of the accessibility of the attractions and the countries around where we lived, like Denmark, France, Finland, and Norway. So travel was a big part of my life back then, and this totally brought back a lot of memories from that. One of my favorite parts of this book is when they're near the end of their travel time in Thailand, which is around Thanksgiving, the instructions they were given to get to their next destination were to go to a local farmer's market and ask for a bowl of soup. And when Kyle goes and asks, a man tells him to follow him to get to their guest house, and this man's name is Soup. His his name is Soup. So... It's surprise details like this that are so interesting and comedic that make the book so captivating. It's definitely more details than you expect. Another interesting characterization point happens earlier when they're in Thailand, and it's when Tish mentions her mental problems and how she goes back to therapy there and is prescribed a day in silence in a beautiful monastery just to think by herself. I think sharing the story of a trip she shared with her family is a like a good way, it's an effective way to disprove the fact or the suspicion that having a family and being married means you can't travel because she expresses all the positive benefits that happened and there wasn't that many negative aspects either. This book is really perfect for people who love the small details that you didn't know you needed to know but you needed to know them. I really recommend it to anyone who likes travel or needs to be proved wrong that traveling with a family isn't fun. I hope you enjoyed this roughly five minute podcast and that you consider reading this book because it's really good and I liked it and I'm a pretty valid source of information. You know, a high school student. Yeah, this is a